Is there something in your heart between you and the Lord? Are you drifting apart, not as close anymore? There's nothing you can do that he will not forgive. Bring it to the cross, let it die so you can live. Nail it to the cross, get it under the blood, drown your pain in every stain in the mercy blood. Nail it to the cross, find hope and forgiveness, kneel at the tree and walk away free. Nail it to the cross. there a burden you bear that's got you battered and bound struggling for strength do you long to lay it down don't take another step just kneel where you stand lay it at the cross and take the hammer in your hand nail it to the cross Search, it's a you. 
until you see his face The answer's right before you at the foot of the cross You'll find that it's a holy place Confess your sins and let them all down Pick up your cross, let Jesus turn your life around and you'll find your Sometimes are here filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, saves from the chastening rod. Seek the way, pilgrims trod, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon. Trumpets will be sound, all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky, going where no no one dies. Heaven will bow. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care, rising up in the sky, telling this world. Trumpets will be sound, all of the dead shall rise. Righteous be in the sky, going where no one one dies. Heaven will bow. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will be there, and trumpets will be sound.
Well, good evening. It's uh, good to see everybody back in, in the Lord's house tonight. Uh, we got Brother Matt's going to come bring us the word in a few minutes. Brother Kenny's going to lead us in a few songs. We'll start off with some of these announcements that we have up here. Uh, the list is. Uh, let's not forget the end of end of school bash on the twenty fourth. Uh, they'll have water slides and pizza, and it says on here, please please bring a towel. So I guess you're going to get wet, and we're. And let's not forget about the fourth of July activities that's coming up. Uh, anybody wants to donate for the fireworks? There is a box back there in the back for that. We're going to try to. We've got a budget set up for it. We're going to try to get as many as we can. And Vacation Bible School will be the 16th through the 20th this year. There's a sign-up sheet for volunteers. There's always, there's always a place to serve in, in VBS. So just see that or see Miss Shug when they get back. And just uh, we all need to come together to serve as much as we can. I've got a trip going to Wild Adventures Park on the 22nd of July. We'll be taking our kids over there. And there's also a Christian concert that afternoon, that evening, for people that want to go. There's also, there's another sign-up sheet in there. We've got some, I won't read them, but there's some new procedures about making purchases in the church, uh, with the, especially so if somebody needs to use the Visa card, but see Albert or, or, or Tiny about that, and we'll, uh, they'll, they'll kind of talk you through what they need there. Uh, and also next Sunday, we're going to try to have a, a business meeting, finance meeting. I'm not sure if it's Sunday morning or Sunday evening yet. Usually we don't have a church service the day before a holiday on the afternoon. So we may have it right after church Sunday morning. But we'll let you know next Sunday about that. We'll, we'll get that worked out. <clears throat> Are there any other announcements that needs to be made before we get started? All right, we'll... Uh, what about prayer requests? Are there any additions that need to be made to the list that we had since this morning? Uh, okay. Rachel and Brentley. Uh, the, there was a thrift family mentioned this morning. That's a Leonard Thrift. Some of y'all might know him, but he passed away this weekend. So just remember, let's remember that family. No relation to me that I know of, but I knew Leonard and he went to school with Tiny, so just remember them. Anything else not need to be mentioned? All right. All right, let's start the night service off with a word of prayer then. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you, Lord, we're just so mindful today and so thankful of the many things you bless us with, Lord, even the breath of life, Lord. We we want to take time to mention these that's on our prayer list today, Lord. You know who they are. You know what their needs are. You know what their concerns are. We just ask that you bless them, Lord. Comfort them. Touch their lives in a way that only you can, Lord. Uh, and so that uh, we can give you the honor and the glory for everything that's accomplished. Be with us tonight. Be with Brother Kenny as he comes and leads us in worship, Lord. And Brother Mac as he brings your word later. Uh, just uh, hide him behind the cross. May he speak your word boldly and plainly in such a way that even a small child can understand. And when we do all this, Lord, we'll just be sure and quick to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise for all in Christ's name. Amen. Brother Kenny, would you come? Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name. Glory to his name, there to my heart was 
was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. O precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds as music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. How I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love, who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my Father has in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, you'll sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. 
Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See, on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, Come home, time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, Come home, oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, Come home.
If you will, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts, chapter 20. Acts 20. Acts 20, we'll start reading in verse number 22. Acts 20, 22. If you will, when you find your place, let's stand and honor the reading of God's perfect, holy word. And it says here in verse number 22, And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, saving that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood for all men, of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Dear God, we come to you, Lord, thanking you for the day you've given us. Lord, thank you for this time we get to come in this place and to serve you and worship you and lift your name on high, God, and we're just thankful for that. And Lord God, I just pray now that you'll take the words that we've spoke out of your word right now, dear God, and I pray you'll speak to us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, as as I always pray, dear God, I pray I decrease and you increase. Lord God, I pray the words that come out of my mouth will be of you, not of me. Lord God, I'm just a mere vessel wanting to be what you've called me to be today, dear God. Lord God, open our ears and let us hear you speak to us tonight, dear Lord. We love you and thank you and give you all the honor, praise, and glory you deserve because you're worthy and we're not, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Paul, Paul had jumped on, in, in the first part of chapter 20, you'll see that Paul is headed to Ephesus. Paul's got a goal. He's got somewhere he wants to be. And that place he wants to be, he wants to be in Jerusalem. He wants to be in Jerusalem. He wants to be in Jerusalem on the Pentecost. And there's a reason he wants to be in Jerusalem when Pentecost happens. Because listen, he knows what happened at Pentecost, man. He knows what had happened that day. The same thing, we know what happened. If we'll go back to Acts 2, you know what happened at Pentecost. Man, it's just like a great revival. Or it's like an awesome church camp. Man, he wants to be back in that spot. That's where he wants to be. The same thing about us. If you think about the time when, when you're as close to God as you ever wanted to be, that's where Paul was desiring at that very moment. He wanted to be at Pentecost. He wanted to be reminded of when, when those, those, those thousands of souls were saved, people was drawn in, and people were being added to the church daily. He wanted to be a part of that again, church. And that should be the desire of every single one of us, that we want to be where God is. We want to be a part. Man, as I, I said this morning, we want to, want to be right there where the right up under the spout where it's all coming out, man. We want to be in the Spirit. And that's what Paul was desiring. And he's telling them, listen, this is the last time I'm going to be there. I, 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 know my time's, I, I know my time's coming close. I know I'm coming to an end. But here, here's what I want to do. And he called them, and he, and he said in verse number 17, um, he said, and from Malthus he sent to Ephesus, and he called the elders of the church. He said, man, I, I got some stuff I want to tell you. And he started telling them in verse 18. He started telling them, and he, and he said in verse 18, and when, when they were come unto him, he said unto them, you know from the first day that I came in Asia, after what manner I've been with you all seasons. And he started encouraging them. He started telling them what was going on and what had happened. And then I jumped down to, to verse 22, and I just, this is just where the Lord sent me. He sent me in a month ago to be right here tonight in, in this spot. He sent me in to preach the same message this morning at another church. I don't know why, but that's just what he said. He said, I want you to preach the same message twice, and it's hard preaching the same message twice. You don't want to say the same thing, but listen, the Lord's in control, man. He'll say what he wants to say. But it says in verse 22, And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit in Jerusalem. And man, man the Lord just got all, all about me about this, this word Bound. I get to thinking about being bound, man. He's bound by the Spirit. He isn't bound by himself. And it makes us ask the question, what are you bound with? Are you bound with circumstances? Are you bound by, because of financial stuff? What are you, what's got you bound up? 
Because, man, right here, Paul said, I'm not bound by anything but Jesus Christ. Man, he's taking me where I need to go, and this is what's bound, binding me up. This is what I'm bound into. And, and man, I just th get to thinking about binding down a load. You know, you, you put a bunch of stuff on the trailer, and you, you put all the ratchet stripes and everything. You try to bind it down. You, you want to make sure that it, it, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. The, the same thing that, that God wants to, to, uh, us, us to do in, in our own life when we serve Christ, we want to be, He wants us to be bound in the Spirit, bound into Him, and not, not tossed to and fro. But that's what happens many times. Many times we get in the way, and, and we start to, throwing ourselves to and fro, and we get out of God's will. That's just what happens. And I get to think about being bound. And it, I, I can see this picture in my head. If you've ever seen the episode of Duck Dynasty, when... when, when Phil and Cy, they, they throw Phil's old grill in, in the truck. He's going to get a warranty for it. He throws that thing in the back of the truck. He tells Cy, Cy, tie that thing down. And, and you know Cy. Cy just takes the rope and throws it over. He says, all right, let's go. Well, it falls out. It falls out on the way, and he loses the thing. That's a funny statement, but the truth is that's the way some of us are. We, we just throw a rope on it, and before you know it, we're, we're tossed to and fro. We, we let something just pull us away. So, so it, 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 it makes me ask my question, what am I bound with? Am I bound, am I bound by the Spirit and let the Spirit move me, or do I move myself? Many times, if we're honest, we move ourselves. We go where we want to go. What makes us happy? If we're truthful, that's just where we go. And it says, and now I'll go bound in the Spirit under Jerusalem. We see where he's wanting to go. He's wanting to be there, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. He's going to go somewhere. He don't even know what's going to happen when he gets there. He said, I don't even know what's there when I get there. Man, today, our wives has got to have an itinerary to know where we're going to go and what we're going to do. Amen. I mean, it's just what it is. They want to know everything about it. We've got to be here then, here then. That's just what happens. Man, let us be like Paul. Paul said, you know what? I'm just going. I'm just going. I'm not worried about anything. And he says right here in verse 23, he said, Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me. And what he's saying right here is, listen, I know when I get there, there's going to be trouble waiting on me. I know that there's going to be trouble waiting on me when I get there. I know that, that, that there's going to be some things. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be people that don't like me, people that don't like the way I preach, people that, that think I'm too loud or thinks I holler too much. There's just going to be people that just don't like it, man. That's what he's saying. He said, but I'm going to go anyway. That's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do what I'm supposed to do, not knowing what's going to happen. That's just what I'm going to do. There's opposition waiting. And you know, if there's somebody sitting here tonight that says, you know, Brother Mike, I, I've just never, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my personal labor, Savior. Can I tell you, it's not a bed of roses. It's not. When you come to Jesus, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean there's a red carpet laid out for you and everything's pleasant in life. No, there's a struggle. There's a person called the devil, and he wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy you. He wants to tear you down. And can I tell you, as long as you're a Christian, I can tell you, you're going to have a battle. That's just what's going to happen. But listen, as I, said, as I said earlier, listen, it doesn't matter how much the battle is. All I know is the retirement plan is awesome, man. It's just awesome. And that's what we got to get excited about. We're going to go through struggles in life. We're going to go through things. But, man, I just get, get jacked up about the 401K plan in heaven, man. You ain't got to worry about it anymore. Amen. And he said in verse 20, but none of these things move me. But none of these things, knowing that I'm going to go through struggles, knowing that there's, he said, nothing's going to move me. It, it, does, it doesn't matter what comes against me, nothing's going to move me. Man, give me that faith, Lord, that nothing will move me. No matter the circumstances that I go through in life, no matter the, the valleys that I sit in life, Lord, still it says he doesn't move him. That, that's, that's the desire that we should all be, is that nothing's going to move me. No, ma no matter if, if I get in an argument with somebody or, or I don't like things at church or, or I, don't I don't like the way somebody's treating me, it doesn't matter. You're still going to serve Christ. That's what he's saying. I'm still going to be who I'm supposed to be in at any time. Because there's times in our life where we just don't feel as close to God and others. Amen? There's times in our lives that listen. 
Sometimes our wives don't want to listen to us like they ought to. Anybody ever dealt with that? Amen. I think it's the other way around most of the time. Amen. I didn't hear any of the women say amen right there. None. There we go. We got one, Miss Honey. Amen. But he said, none of these things move me. But look what he says next. He said, neither count I my life dear unto myself. And, and, and that's where the rubber meets the road, man. When, when you understand it, listen, this, this life is not about you. God did not create you. God did not create me so I can make myself happy. God created you so you could go out and tell the world of the mighty to save. That's what he created you and I for. And we've got to understand that's why he created us. Man, we've got to get out of the way. He said, he said, I can't be moved. Then he said, when he said, I count not my life dear to me and to myself. Man, he's worried more about Jesus than he is himself. He's worried more about Jesus than he is his kids or his grandkids. You say, well, Brother Mac, I love my grandkids. That's okay to love them, man, but you can't put them in front of Christ. You can't use them as an example and say, listen, I can't go somewhere because, it, listen, you better be about God's business. God can take the things from you if you ain't careful to put them in front of him. You say, Brother Mac, you ought not to say that. Man, it's the truth. Then he said, so that I might finish my course with joy. Listen, Paul, you got to understand, Paul went through some trials in his life. You got to understand, man, and Paul was persecuting Christians. You got to understand the scales was on Paul's eyes till they fell off. And when they fell off, he seen Jesus. He seen heaven. He seen the end goal. It, it, it's kind of like us. Man, it's kind of like if, if you like to work out or if you like to, to play ball or whatever, you've got an end goal. Your end goal might be that, that you can bench press 350 pounds. Your end goal might be that you can win, win a, a, a high school championship or, 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 or a little league championship. You, everybody's got goals in life. But, man, we've got to meet them. Paul met that goal. He, he understood his goal. He had his eyes set on it. He had a vision. Listen, where, there no, where there's no vision, the people perish. That's what the Word says. He had a vision, man, and he was headed toward it. He was doing what God called him to do. He wasn't going to let anything get in his way. He was kind of like a train on the track, man, full steam ahead. It didn't matter what was on the track. He was going to stay on course. It didn't matter what you threw on his track. It didn't matter what you threw in front of him. He stayed on course. We ought to learn from Paul. We ought to learn that he said, man, I'm not going to quit. It, it, throw, throw everything you want in front of me. It, hey, if you kill me, hey. The, the Bible says in, in Philippians, let me turn there right quick. Philippians 1, 21, I believe it is. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in straight betwixt between two, having the desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. He said, that's okay. That's okay. But look what he says. So that I might finish my course with joy. There's a difference between joy and happiness. There's a difference. Man, you can find happiness in a boy or a girl. You, you, can, you can find happiness in, in, in a ball. I remember the, the ball was my thing. I mean, that, that was my happiness. You can find happiness in all kinds of things. You can find happiness in, 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 in alcohol or drugs or, or all this stuff. You can find happiness. But in the morning, you're not so happy. The next day, you're not so happy because that happy is gone. Can I tell you, the Bible says that joy, it's in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Joy is something, man, it, it ain't going to leave you. Because your joy is that, man, Jesus, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to be there for you. And, and because I'm going to be there for you, man, you ought to live for me. There's joy. So what's your joy in? Is it in the circumstance or the Savior? What, what's it in? What's your joy in? Because listen, if your joy is in your, in your circumstances, they'll fail you, but the Savior won't. If, if your joy's in your finances, it'll fail you, but the Father won't. It just won't. And he said, in the ministry, we're in verse 24 now, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. 
Every single person sitting in this room, if you've been saved, you've been called into the ministry. You've been called to do God's will. I've been called to do God's will and, and, and different, different ministries that God's called you into. But you've got to do that ministry. I've got to do the ministry that God's called me to do. Man, he's called you to do that. Look, look what he says in the next part of that. And the ministry which I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace. Man, that's just what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to testify of what he's done in our lives. The good news. Hey, testify that I once was lost, but now I'm saved. Testify, but listen, he is who he is, says he is, man. He took me from, he took me from, from a dirty spot, and, and, he, and man, what does it say in Psalms 40? He pulled me out of a horrible pit and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings, and he's put a new song in my heart, a new song, and many shall see it and fear God and come to him. That's what the Bible says. Man, that's what people should need to go tell other people of what, what he's done in their lives. That's what we got to do. I wrote this down I was, when I was studying this week. I'm just a nobody trying to tell another nobody about somebody that changed my life. Amen. That's how we've got to be. Because yeah. he's everything. But Paul says right there in verse number, verse number 25, and now behold, I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Man, he's, he's telling them right there. If we're not careful, we'll run right by that and understand. Paul's saying, you're dear to me. <clears throat> There's a lot of people in this room that's dear to me. Man, I mean, I've grown up here for the last 15 years or I don't even know how many years. Man, you're dear to me. And you mean something to me. And that, that's what Paul was telling the church at Ephesus. That's what he's telling the elders. Man, you mean something to me. You're not just a number. You're not just somebody. Man, you're somebody to me. And that's what, he, that's what Paul was telling the church at Ephesus. Man, I love you. That's pretty much what he's telling. I love you. I thank God for you. I'm glad that I, I'm part of the, you're, you're part of this whole realm of the ministry that I'm in. <clears throat> he said, he said I, I, I'm, I'm thankful. But he said, you shall see my face no more. He knew what was coming. That's why he was telling them what he's telling them. But he said in verse 26, he said, Wherefore I take you to record this day, this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. And we know what he's talking about there. He's taking them to, to, to Ezekiel, or, uh, Ezekiel 3 or 33. I, I like Ezekiel 33. I've preached that there before. He's taking them to Ezekiel 33. When, when he says right there that, that I'm pure of the, of the blood of all men, man, he's saying, I blowed the trumpet, man. He's saying in verse Ezekiel 33, he said, I was sitting in the tower. I seen trouble coming, and I blowed the trumpet to let you know, hey, he's coming. Trouble's coming. Can I tell you? If you're sitting here tonight, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm blowing the trumpet for you right now and telling you, if you never accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're going to die and go to a devil's hell. I'm just telling you. That's just the truth. I'm going to blow the trumpet for you and tell you right now, your blood's not going to be on my hands. I'm going to make sure I let you know that, that if you're lost and undone without Jesus Christ, you just need to bow before him and say, listen, Lord, I need to be saved. You can sit right here in your seat as I'm preaching and say, listen, Lord, I'm lost. I need to be saved. Will you come into my life and save me? Hey, and just as simple as that, he'll come into your life and he'll save you. And he'll change you forever. That's what he'll do. But you've got to be obedient and let him come in. We've got to blow the trumpet, church. We've got to let people know. How many times has God put you on the path and you know that God told you to tell that person about Jesus? And you didn't. The blood's on your hands. Yes. Man, we got to get the blood off our hands. If God told you to do it, we got to do it. He said, Brother Mike, I, I might not feel comfortable with it. God didn't call us to comfortable. That's right. That's right. He just didn't call us to comfortable. He said, I for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. The whole counsel. He said, I, I haven't failed to tell you. I haven't failed to tell you. So I'm going to tell you right now. I know this is a lengthy message, but it's okay because we're going to let God have this, not me. He said that I've, I've declared unto you all the whole counsel of God. 
Man, if you're lost and undone tonight, and you're sitting there thinking, whoa, Brother Mac, you don't understand what I've done wrong. You, you don't understand where I've been or my thoughts or my actions or what it is. Can I tell you, the Bible says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. It says in, in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all means all, that means you. That means me. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and, and the Bible says in, in Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means us. That means you. That means you. But, but it says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. If you're sitting here without Jesus Christ tonight, your wages of sin is death. But to finish that verse, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the gift that he's offering to every single person tonight that's never accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. You say, Brother Mike, how do I do it? The Bible says in 10 9, if you'll confess the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what the word says. And it says in Romans, Romans, Romans 10 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody. It doesn't matter what your background is or what you've done, it matters who he is. It matters who he is. So he says in verse 28, he tells him, he said, take heed. Man, this is an awesome verse. This is, awesome. This, this is a verse that stuck with me a month ago. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Take heed. What he's saying is, I, mean, I want you to examine your own lives. When he says take heed unto yourselves, I want you to examine where you're at. I want you to examine your relationship with God and see where you're at. Man, what, what about your prayer life? What about your Bible time? What, what about getting in the closet and praying for lost souls and praying for people that's sick? What, what about that? That's what he said. Examine your own self. But too many times we're not worried about our own self. We're worried about saying, hey, did you hear what happened to so-and-so? Hey, did you hear what so-and-so did? Listen, we're worried about the speck in their eye and we ain't pulled the boulder out of our own eye, man. We need to be worried about doing what God's called us to do and not worried about everybody else. Amen. That's what he's saying. That's what he's trying to tell us right here. We need to be worried about getting our own self cleaned up. Because listen, hey, I don't know if you've noticed, but little feet are watching you. Little feet are watching me. They're watching the way you walk. They're watching the way you talk and what you're listening to and what you're watching on the TV too. They're watching that stuff and they want to be like you, daddy. They want to be like you, mama. Grandma and granddaddy, they want to act like you do. That's just what they want to do. And you might be very careful. Be careful because they're watching. Take heed, therefore, to yourselves. And when you get, when you get yourself right, then it says, then, then what does it say? Take heed also unto all the flock. Amen. To all the flock. Guess who the flock is? The, the flock is, is Oak Hill Baptist Church. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you right now. The flock's not everybody that's sitting here. The flock's everybody that's a member of Oak Hill Baptist Church. Hey, sometimes you need to go out there and round your flock back up and get them in here, man. That's what you need to do. Not to say, that, hey, look at our numbers. It's to say, hey, look at our Lord. That's what it is. And we need to make sure that we're doing our job as people to draw them in, the ones that's, that's, that's filtered away, the ones that's not in the Word anymore, the ones that's not showing up to church anywhere anymore. Man, we need to encourage them. That's what we need to do, every single one of them. That's what we've got to do. And that's on us all. Brother Mac, you mad? No. I'm just telling you, God wants to work. He wants to work in our lives. Think about it. Think about the time when you was as close to God as you ever was. What were you doing then differently than what you're doing now? What were you doing then that you're not doing now? Man, we need to think about that. You say, well, I'm in a different stage in, in, in my life. No. Man, he's true to his word, and he's going to be there for you, man. Just, just do your job. Just do your job. It's simple. Just do our job. Like I said, he didn't say it was going to be a bed of roses. But, man, you've got to look at the end goal. You've got, to have a, you've got to be driven to look at the end goal. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. And it says he was talking to the elders of Ephesus. You, you, in our minds we're thinking, well, he's just talking to the, he's talking to the deacons. No, you're, you're all called to be overseers. How many people's looking up to you? Man, we've got to do our job. 
and to feed and to feed the church of God. To feed them. Not only just a physical feeling, which is that that's good. That's good. We was down at Riverside this morning, man, they fed us, amen, they fed us now. I'm talking about they had three tables laid out, and we had all you could eat. We got done down there today. That was a physical feeding, and that was awesome because it, it draws fellowship. That's what it does. People fellowship with, with different people, and, and that's what happens. But, man, we got to feed them spiritually. Listen, we can't just win people to Jesus, and, and they fill out a card, and we dunk them in the water, and okay, they're good. Man, that's when the job begins, man. We, we, we've got to build them up. We've got to raise them up. Amen. There, there's some, some of our old youth back there, man. We've got to raise them up. We've got to continue to push them on, push them on down the road, as Brother Ray said many times. We've got to keep on keeping on, and that's our job. It's not the jobs of Ray. It's not the job just of the deacons. It's the job of the church, man. You're all called to be a church, and we've all called to do our job. But too many times we want to send them into youth and tell them to raise them. Listen, it's time that we be a parent and we raise them. We tell them about Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen. And it says to feed the, feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Yes. That's what he purchased us with. Man, you get to thinking about the blood. I just get, I get excited. I was sharing, sharing earlier this morning that Man, I get thinking about blood and it just, it burdens me. To think about the blood he shed and the sins of mine that he had to feel on that cross. It ought to make us sin different. It ought to make us think different before we sin, understanding that his blood was shed for you and I. He, he, he did that for you and I. And if it was just for you, man, he'd have done it. He'd have done it just for one. Hey, he went out and got that one out of that, that hundred, didn't he? He went and got that one sheep. Man, that's what he wants to do. Can I tell you something? He, th th this message was a, a message to encourage us, to draw us up. To Man, pa Paul was trying to, trying to let Ephesus know, man, listen, I want, you, I want you to be strong, and I want you to understand what I've done for you, and I, I want you to know all these things. He said, but, but in the end, I want you to know this. He said, take heed therefore, I mean, he says in verse number 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. They don't, the devil don't care. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and, and every time, every time, and I shared this this morning, I'm going to share it again, Miss man, even this morning, I seen the devil just trying to come all over me. I knew the devil was attacking me. And, and I, told, I, told, I told him, and I told y'all this the other day. Listen, when, I done figured the devil out. When the, when the devil's attacking me hard, I know God's fitting to use me, man. He's just putting fuel on my fire, man. Just keep pouring it on. But I got to be ready. I got to make sure I got the shield on. We got to make sure that we're ready because if we're not, hey, he'll give us in our weakness and he'll drag us down and put us down. And before we know it, we, we done turned into sin. Can I tell you make, sure you, make sure you put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil when he brings it at you. That's what he's saying. Make sure that you've done that. But in the, in the end, church, one thing is encouraged with the night. Don't quit. Don't quit. I know it's tough sometimes. I know it's tough when you don't get the results you want to hear. I know it's tough when, when your marriage is where it ought to be. I, I know it's tough when, when, when things ain't going good at work. I know, I know it's tough, but don't quit. He didn't quit on you, man. He's still working on you. I love that little song. I love that little song those kids sing. He's still working on me. Man, he's still working on me. I know I haven't arrived. I, I, I know God's still working on me. And I pray you don't quit that he keeps working on you, church. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you. We thank you, dear God, for your word. We thank you, dear God, that, man, you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord God, that you're always there for us. You're always trying to encourage us. You're always, even when we turn our back on you, God, you're always there. I'm thankful, thankful for that. Now, Lord, as we go out of this place, help, help us put feet on our faith. Help us to go out and, and tell the world of the mighty to save, because you are mighty. Help us to go tell, tell, the gospel, dear God. Help us to go testify, Lord, of what you've done in our life to the people out there. Help us to be more like you, Lord, I pray. 
Now go with us now. Lead God and direct us, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. tonight um, glad to be here glad to be here um, has anybody got anything before we dismiss if not brother Larry will you close in prayer brother